Well, today's talk to lead us into meditation is about harnessing the power of habit. And I must tell you that when um, when I uh, look at the topics list and when my name is matched up for that Sunday for that topic, I'm always there are certain topics I'm always like, hopefully I can avoid talking about. <laughs> uh, and this one is unfortunately when you play Russian roulette like that, you <laughs> sometimes <laughs> get the bullet. Um, Paul, I want to check in with you about the mic. It's a little bit echoey. So uh, I wanted to, um, when I thought about habits for myself, of course, and also uh, when I think about habits from when I was younger and in my youth, I think the main takeaway for me is that um, habits, <coughs> habits in them, in them of itself, are not terribly bad because they can lead you to a point where you're getting to your goal, and that is the main takeaway, the most positive way to set habits and frame them in your mind. And <clears throat> when I was younger, um, living on the, the boat in San Diego was really kind of the beginning of my journey about learning how to meditate and being uh, a uh, spiritual aspirant, if you will, and uh, <clears throat> like all beginnings, you start feeling your way around, you start internally making mistakes, you start thinking about heavily about wrong and right within yourself, and I always remember how Norm you'd, would um, call me up around 7.30 every single morning. <laughs> are you up? <laughs> What's going on? What are you doing? Are you, did you meditate? Did you start your day with a habit of good and positiveness <clears throat> that you can carry forward in, in, throughout your work day? And, uh, <clears throat> and reflecting on those days and looking at sometimes of the images of the community here in the past and um, <clears throat> I was thinking about all those habits that the young kids, or 20 year olds I should say, who started this community uh, had and what they had to go through and they, um, you know, practiced um, being free of, of money in a sense by uh, working together as a community or what, it, what would happen if I did grow up my, grow up my hair and uh, having that habit of basically framing yourself as somebody who is a seeker and making sure that your mind is directed in that inward push or food comes to mind. How do you purify the temple that is given to you, your body, in this world? And starting that effort of um, self-rejuvenation, if you will, and doing that under the, the help or the guidance of, of, um, of somebody that you trust, but also mainly inwardly doing that hard work of inner check-in and making sure that the things that we all grew up with, the habits that we are constantly having in tow, how are they landing? Are they still serving me? <clears throat> and um, it's interesting that this topic is coming up here at the uh, beginning of um, the astrological sign of Virgo, because Virgo, um, the power and the energy of that uh, energy coming through, you know, the um, rays of the solar sun here onto this earth have a um, 
they exemplify um, inward moderation and self-control. And if we think about self-control, it, it has to do with that internal play of that spiritual power, that spiritual awakeness that we can all have and tap into inside ourselves. And this vital force that we are all um, given to help surge our spiritual path and journey forward in this life uh, can be used to dis for discernment and to hold that spiritual life force and to you know cultivate it inwardly it has a lot to do with, with how we uh, work our way through our own habits and routines that we establish in our lives. Because in a way, habits can either help us harness this life force in, inwardly, uh, and I'll explain in a little bit how that shows up, or habits can dissipate that life force within ourselves make it essentially harder to move and to connect for all intents and purposes with our spiritual um, desires and goals that we that our heart presents us with. Um, you know, in, in, in a simple way of looking at it, it's like which are the strengths that we are cultivating inside that help us in our meditation practices and in our goals to connect inwardly and with the divine and with our heart and uh, which habits uh, surface that need to that need to be changed that you would like uh, for them to go away. Um, you know, habits, that, I mean, there's physical habits that we can easily point to, like drinking coffee and, um, or tea or <clears throat> smoking, but that's not really a thing so much anymore, um, or overindulgences, you know, things that we can, that we do physically that that we know have a negative effect on ourselves. And there's also like the habits that are inside. For instance, the, the habit of envy or being despondent to life or not wanting to engage fully with life. Um, those are all things that can can hold us back and when we kind of generate a habit with those things like we need to be able to stop and recognize aha in that moment this is something that I do that doesn't really um, service and help me anymore so how, how do I set this thing aside? How do I change that behavior within me? And so I started looking around in, into what Yogananda had to say about bad habits. And um, he, he had this little write-up in the book called Man's Eternal Quest, and it's titled, um, Impeach a bad president and it's still a good one. And it was all about that the president basically is our habits. And I was like, oh man, this is going to hit a little bit too close to home for this crowd right now <laughs> in the elections and everything else. 
but he used pretty strong language <clears throat> like spiritual famine this is what like bad habits can do inside of ourselves they can cause spiritual famine and they can create mental fevers and uh, a universal poverty of the body and the mind existing in that misruled land and uh, I was like going, okay, yes, <laughs> yes, and I, I, I know that he is presenting this thing as like, we need to wake up and we need to look at what it is that is causing us to not make the spiritual journey within ourselves to basically he's imploring us to cast away those things that really are holding us back <clears throat> and when I think about at the time when he wrote this stuff and how it, this kind of writing affected the generations that started the community and started this this goal of changing ourselves and to purify ourselves this is this was what was needed to really kind of kick everyone in the gear about the change that needed to take place to become and to stay uh, on the spiritual journey and um, he says that first you have to convince your mind that you are going to overthrow the tyranny of an undesirable ruling of a bad habit and then begin the work of mindful agitation and I think what he means by that is to start recognizing the habit that, that you have that you want to um, change and you start looking at it like as if it was an obstacle that you need to acknowledge and you need to kind of start moving it aside and, and look for something that is different. A whining, sorrowing attitude, gentle remonstrance or even violent but spasmodic rebellion is of little avail when looking at this habit. You can't make yourself want to not drink coffee anymore for an hour or just by looking at it and going, I don't want you anymore. That might be the beginning of the thing to help you kind of set that aside but it is through a continuous repetition of certain actions that you are the maker of your habits and you must undo the hurtful ones by similarly regular effort implementing <coughs> conscious exercise that will of uh, exercise of the will to discriminate uh, and discernment of the power of reason. So I guess he's basically saying that it is through your staunch <coughs> perseverance to insist on the change that change will come when I reflect on habits I notice that they have a lot to do with inner movement of life force because um, when we engage in a habit we are using our mind and our physical movement sometimes but also our life force to engage with that and it is
is that life force that has to be moved into a different direction within ourselves. So in a way we have to pull back from that habit and then we have to discernibly move our life force in a different direction, in a different trajectory. We have to, we have to make that habit and look for something better that we want to put in its place. As we sit here, it might be a good time to reflect on what kind of habits we engage in ourselves. Which habits got us here today? And how we use our will and our discernment to wake up, get ourselves ready, and come here today. We know internally that everything that we do in life, in our choices that we make, every second, every moment, and we build internally action plans to help us along to steer our course, and we ask Spirit to guide us to help us to stay true in the pers perseverance of our life force and to be able to release those habits that no longer serve us. And in that play of observing our habits, when we are alone, when we are able to have that moment of clarity, and to put that habit onto the altar and ask, is it really still important? It helped me get this far, but is it guiding me in the right direction now? leading, is my spirit really leading me, or are my habits leading me? What is my overarching goal? Let's move into meditation now.
Oh. I can tell if a habit has the power to keep me doing that habit or if I have the power to maneuver away from it pretty easily. Take my affinity, uh, my affection, I guess, for coffee. Do I have the power to step away from it and do something completely different in that time that I would normally be making myself that morning cup of coffee? <coughs> And what also comes to mind is this interplay between habits and time. Because how many of us have tried something, done it for a time, and then changed, only to go back to it again, or have it come up in a different, slightly different way? in our lives. And I think that is really the important part of what Yogananda is trying to say <clears throat> when it comes to bad habits. It's that it don't let anything get you to the point where you no longer are the master of your own decisions and your own path. In other words, are you following your nose or is your nose pulling you along? And there's something I wanted to read. I put a little clarity on it. From Yogananda, why is it that you sometimes find yourself acting or reacting contrary to your real desires? Because over a period of time you have built up habits that are contrary to those desires and your actions automatically flatter your habits. If you must first establish, you must first establish habits that will influence your actions to cater to your true ideals. And I think that's the real crux of it on a spiritual path. Setting forth your plan, your desire for a spiritual awakening comes first and foremost. And then you have to check to see if all of your habits are aligned with that, with that goal. And if they are not, they will hold you back. And it's up to our awareness to check that, to be vigilant. It 
It's interesting to note that habits have shaped entire civilizations, entire cultures, entire races and countries. So as we finish today here, and we are able to have a little bit of reflection time within ourselves. Hopefully, we've all had a chance to take a little glimmer, gl glimpse of what some of our habits are. And also to note that we, as spiritual beings, have the power to set up and establish new and more strengthening habits. Like for instance, the habit of having a good outlook in life. If you are prone to always look at things in a negative manner or in a hardship type of manner, to establish within yourself the habit of looking at the positive parts of life. And that in turn can change the life force within you and help you bring to that true re realization within inside of yourself of how beautiful life really is. Making a habit of looking over the landscape and feeling that spirit flowing over the landscape making a habit of seeing your body as a temple and having that desire slowly come forth for its health and healing Divine Light, <coughs> Divine Spirit, help me free myself from the things that hold me back. Might I lift them up into the light with compassion and humility, knowing <clears throat> that we are all, we are all on the path and may I release that which serves us, serves me no more.
between the stars. 